and welcome to our show for the love of animals. I'm Greg Bauer and my normal uh, cohort with me, Darlene Pigford, is not with us today. And uh, so I'm doing this by myself and you can see I've got a, a wonderful little uh, guy here on the table with this. Uh, we have a very unusual show for you today. Uh, one dealing with the hairless cat, other sometimes known as a sphinx cat. And our guest is Teresa um, Abita from Clinton, Kentucky. She's raised these hairless cats for a number of years and she's gonna give us a, a real good lesson on what these things are all about. So, Teresa, thank you so much for sharing time with us this afternoon. Well, I'm very glad to be here okay. to share some of the okay. uh, questions that people have about Sphinx and their demeanor and... Okay. Well, let's, let's go ahead and get started. Um, now, the Sphinx cat is, is very unusual, or the, basically the hairless cats. Where did these cats come from originally? Well, uh, what we call and known of them being Sphinx today, they started in uh, Canada in 1966. There was two cats that were fully coated and they had a litter of kittens and they were hairless. Mm -hmm. The strange thing about it is both of them would have to carry the same gene uh -huh. in order to come up with hairless cats. So actually it's a natural mutation. It's not something that we developed, it's a natural. And when uh, uh, the Canadians tried to work with the Sphinx to um, uh, develop, you know, to have mm -hmm. them go right. on to keep, uh, right. keep them living, they, they didn't have too much success, so they sent them on to Netherlands. Netherlands went and done some outcross breeding with them and, uh, and successfully come up with what we call the hairless mm -hmm. sphinx today. And uh, um, I might mention to the viewers, because I had made the same mistake, when you talk about a sphinx cat, it's spelled S-P-H-Y-N-X, not S-P-H-I-N-X, as most people spell the word sphinx. So. Uh, it, it, you have to, if you're going to look up for some information about these wonderful cats, be sure you have the spelling correctly on that, <laughs> or use hairless. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, uh, this particular cat that we brought today, Diamond. Yes. She's, she's rolling on the table here. Uh, I think she's wanting a treat. Okay, well. <laughs> she's, uh, you get her one these here. cats here, they're, they, they love to get into your face. They, they're very um, lovable. They're very needy. They're, they, uh, it's all about them. They think that they own you. <laughs> and That's a typical cat. <laughs> yeah, and they, they're different than the average cat because they're more like a dog. They're cross between a dog a monkey and a parrot. They climb over everything, they get into everything, uh, they like to sit on your shoulder like a parrot, mm -hmm. they like to climb inside your clothing to keep warm, they like to get into the warmest place of all because they, they burn more calories than the average cat because mm -hmm. of having no hair, they eat more, a little more, and, um, but uh, they, they try to find the warmest place they can. Mm -hmm. And that's usually in your lap. <laughs> <laughs> well, she sure has been friendly since she's been here. Now, um, she f feels very different than most people have felt cats before and you feel the hair and so on. But the feeling on this, kind of describe to us what this feels like. Uh, well, Teresa. there's different feels. Like her, she feels more like a chamois. Mm-hmm, uh, right. And, um, kind of a suede almost. Suede, yeah, like a suede feeling is what she feels like. And then you got your ones that have like a, a peach-like fuzz, you know, peach-like feeling. Mm -hmm. Then you have some that are what you call very sticky bald and, and um, it's okay, baby. They're, they're sticky bald and, and I have one at home that's like that. They feel very, very, you know, mm -hmm. sticky. As yeah. I said, see how she does. She wants to get inside my shirt. That's the way <laughs> they like to do. Well, and, and you've said that the, the cats are very intelligent. 
Oh yes, if you go on my website and you will see on the cat channel that, uh, speaking of different breeds of cats, <laughs> mm -hmm. that, um, that the Sphinx are the smartest of all breed of cats. Mm, okay. They're the most intelligent. In fact, they're like puppies too. They like to fetch toys, they like to play. Come on, you settle down a little bit. Go over there by him. He got you some Come treats. Here. here you go. Here. Look what he's got. Here. Got treats? Here. There we are, Diamond. There you go. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Your little. <laughs> there you go. There. Here we go. There. That's what she's wanting. There. Yeah. And the, you know, there was the old sign that we've seen: a dog looks at you as family, and a cat looks at you as staff. Um, and we think of most cats in that way. And the the, the hairless cat is much the same um, mold, if you will, as yes. all other cats. All other cats. Uh -huh. In fact, um, the this breed here actually you know the hairless cats people don't realize have been around for centuries but then they died out oh, okay. and um, uh, it goes back as far as the 13th century that we can find that there's documents proven that they were um, hairless cats then but they were in Mexico oh, okay. and they were called the Mexican hairless oh, okay. and um, and then Aztec Indians there used to use them as bed warmers because their their little bodies are hot like mm -hmm. hot water bottles. She, uh, she's very warm when you touch her. Very it. warm, and they just um, so it's 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 a natural mutation. They've been around a long time. People just don't realize that they mm -hmm. they uh, see a hairless cat and they think, oh my gosh, but they've been around a long time. They just died out, and then, as I said in the beginning of the program, they found these two cats uh -huh. that okay. ended up carrying the gene. If I were to have a, a hairless cat, say, in my family, and there were other cats, would they get along well with oh each other? Oh my goodness, yes. And you know, well, you know, they're like uh, you know mm -hmm. any other cat. They might spit maybe a couple of days uh -huh. and say, oh, you know, because. In your home, that's they figure that's their territory. Mm -hmm, yes. And so when you bring somebody strange in or something, uh, or even with a dog, they feel like you're stepping on their territory. But after a couple of days, they just they'll be sleeping together. They'll be the best friends. They get mm -hmm. along great with a any animal. They get along great with kids. They get along great with anybody it mm -hmm. don't matter who the person is they can come through my front door and it, they're not like your average cat mm -hmm. run and hide they're going to jump on your shoulder oh. the first thing they're going to do is say look at me it's all about me <laughs> so typical cat <laughs> that yeah it's just like um like your average cat they if a stranger comes to the door they disappear mm -hmm. and these cats are different they will not disappear in fact they will be right in your face oh, and they okay. don't care who it is just as long as they get attention uh -huh. well now tell us a little bit more about diamond who's who's uh, visiting with us here today. Well, Diamond here, she is a very nosy cat, and <laughs> <laughs> she loves to get into everything. She's very loving. She rode here real well in the car, uh -huh. and um, of course, she loves her treats, as you can see. And um, she is into everything, and she loves run the water, when you run the water. If she hears the water running in the sink, she comes a running because she kno that's where she loves to drink from the faucet. Oh, okay, okay. And now, how old is Diamond? Well, she's going on two years old. Two years old. Is she, is she, so she's pretty well full grown. Oh yes, point. oh yes. Um, uh, by the time they're two years old is when we consider them at their full uh, being full grown because usually males don't mass out. She's a mm. female, yeah. but uh, males mass out more in their face. They get more, uh, you know, bullish okay. looking. And, and, and so 
the average weight of, a, say, an adult um, hairless cat would be what? Maybe six, seven, eight pounds? Yeah, a female is from six to eight, and mm -hmm. then uh, the male is anywhere from eight to ten. They can okay. go a little bit over, a little bit under. Okay. This all depends on the, the cat. And you're not getting in my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> go over there by Greg and get a treat. Come here. See, he's got one in a cape right there. There's one. There's one. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Wait a minute. Come over here. You're walking away from it. Where? Here. Right there, Diamond. Here, Diamond. There you go. Okay. <laughs> she's smelling it. She's looking for it. Mm. There it is down there. Now, the, the, these particular cats, of course, as we say, they're hairless, they have a very different feel to them and so on. Um, and they're, they're quite, uh, oh, let's say, tame, I guess you would say. Oh, well, very, very. So they're, they don't tend to be aggressive. They're not no, aggressive they're, with other cats then? They're, they're not aggressive cats at all. In fact, mm -hmm. as you see, this is what they want. They want to be held all the time. If, uh, if you're cleaning, they don't care if they're in your arms. I've even had them where I had put a house coat on and tie it to where they could lay inside my belly, like my belly, you know, uh -huh. and lay in there and you can vacuum, you can mop, and they don't care how much they're bounced around in there, just as long as they're right close to you, as you can see, the way they love to be now, held. Are, are, uh, in terms of the color of the cat, um, obviously she's kind of a suede, kind of a suede brown as we can see on the, on the well, screen. She's it, are all Sphinx cats basically the same color or they're different no. colors? They come in every other color just like any other cat. They okay. come in the calico, torty, they come in your, like you was talking about earlier, uh, uh, tuxedos and they come in different shades of color, black, blue, uh, and she's considered a red and white. Okay. Very, very interesting. <laughs> oh, Diamond, you are just a fascinating little girl. Yeah, and she's spoiled, as you see. She wants to be up in my lap here. Uh -huh. Well, you can go down to Mama if you want. <laughs> I'll let you get down there. Oh, you turn around this way so they can see you. There, there we go. Oh. And this way. The, 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 we were really getting an education this afternoon. Our, our viewers, I know, are seeing something they probably have never seen before. And we want to just take a short break now and listen to a happy tale. And this is a little more information about Diamond. And uh, I think you'll be interested. In, give a listen. <laughs> Diamond is a one-year-old female sphinx cat. She has many little mannerisms that make her a favorite with people who come to visit. She loves to drink water from a running faucet, so as soon as she hears that faucet running, she takes off after it. Definitely a nosy cat, she loves to open doors and cabinets. She loves to jump on any strangers that come through the door just for attention. She seems to want to say, hey, look at me, I'm important. She likes to sleep with her owner every night and she crawls under the covers and lays right beside her all night long. Welcome back. We hope you are enjoying this particular show uh, about the hairless or the sphinx cat as uh, sometimes called and our guest this afternoon is uh, Teresa Abita from uh, Clinton, Kentucky and she raises these little cats. Uh, little, maybe is not the right word for it, but uh, it's a very affectionate and a very different hairless cat. And uh, if, if any of your viewers have ever seen one before, and probably most of you haven't, there it's a very, very fascinating kind of cat. Come here, Diamond, you want to get down on the floor? Oh, while I'm putting her down on the floor, Teresa, how, if our viewers want to get more information about uh, these cats, uh, what's the phone number that they could use? Well, they can call me at 270-254-0303 if they want to know more information on them because there is so much information on them that they will not get in this particular show here. 
Okay, and you have a website that they could yes, also access? Yes, I also have a website and there's loads of information about these Sphinx. And the uh, website is www.ab, as in baby, E-I-T-A, G-A-T-O-S dot com. Okay. Well, as you can see, but you've gotten some information now about ter from Teresa about the a phone number and a website where you can get more information about this. And you can see now I have diamond in my lap. <laughs> Typical cat. Yeah, sugar. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay. <laughs> Just a very, very sweet little cat here. And uh, Teresa, we, we have some you know, other pictures that you brought with you. And so let's take a look at some of those, and okay. you can tell us about each of the uh, cats. Let's start with uh, 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 um, Armando. Armando, uh, thank okay. you. I couldn't remember his <laughs> name. Yeah. Armando. Well, what's unusual about this particular cat? Oh my goodness! Now he is—he is a little stinker. He—he's the one that really loves to fetch toys, uh -huh. and um, in fact, he really um, is really good with the kittens. When I have a litter of kittens, he pretty much uh, fathers them like, you know, or mothers them. He acts like a mother more than he's a male. And in fact, he, uh, he pretty much gets them um, ready for their new homes because he plays with them and uh -huh. gets them used to uh, all different things. I mean, he, he, he's, he's like a, a little instructor, you know, mm -hmm. makes them behave, uh, you know, like a mother does. And he's just a phenomenal cat. Mm -hmm. As you say, she loves to sit up on the shoulders here, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She does. <laughs> I've got her now, though, yeah. so she's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and uh, the next picture that we have is of some babies. Tell us what's kind of unusual about this picture. Well, the babies, they, um, what's really uh, unique about the babies is when they're born, they're really, really wrinkled. They're more wrinkled like a little Sharpe puppy. Oh, okay. And uh, of course, as they get older, they lose a lot of their wrinkles. Uh -huh. uh, but they mainly um, uh, Keep when they, as they get older, their wrinkles come back in, and usually it's more on their <laughs> it's more on their head and their um, legs, uh, and their bodies are more smoother. But you see more of the wrinkles on their legs and in in their head, mm -hmm. and as they grow older, but um, they're like any other baby. But you got to keep them warmer, you know. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little okay. harder to raise them than it is um, cats with hair because of them having no hair. Uh -huh. Got to put them on a heat pad and stuff. Okay. And uh, how many uh, cats are usually in a litter? Oh my goodness gracious! I mean, it varies. I had one litter that had nine babies, mm. but your average litter is anywhere from four to five. Okay. And you will, depending on the female, you will get maybe a, two babies, and you can get up to. I've I've seen uh, some sphinx that's had even ten before. Uh -huh. uh, I never had ten. I've had nine. Uh oh, don't pull out of there. You just did. Oh. <laughs> uh. uh. She is precocious to say the least, isn't she? Yeah, she <laughs> she is in. She is getting a little restless because yes, she wants... She's, she's been very, very well behaved. Oh, yeah. What it is is she's wanting to get on the floor and figure out and study the place and be very... Mm -hmm. She wants to be adventurous <laughs> and check things out. Mm -hmm. That's a typical cat. Yeah, she says, it ain't fair that I have to sit here and not get down on the floor to play like I want to. So it looks like a lot of interesting things around mm -hmm, me mm -hmm. yeah, that she would love to get into. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at our next picture. This one is of Haley. What, what, tell us about Haley. Haley, she is a beautiful girl. She's uh, 
she was uh, she was she's a regular love bug to um, very very needy very loving great mother and um, she just loved everybody in fact she was one of them that are really up in your face mm -hmm. and um, some are more than others and she was more than others uh, more than your average sphinx I mean she was really wanting to be up with you follow you room to room everywhere you go she would go okay the next uh, one we have a photo of is Hevianda. That's an unusual name. Hevianda. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yes, it is. And she was one of my very favorites, and she reminded me of a bat cat. Mm. I've waved her markings were. I always would think, oh, she could probably be in one of the movies, you know, <laughs> with Batman and Bat, you know, it, it, and be the one the stars in it, you know, as a bat cat, you mm, know, it, okay. it's, it just, she had a unique personality. She was different than the others. Um, she was uh, sort of more, she didn't socialize as much with the other cats because she didn't think she was a cat. <laughs> she thought she was a person. Mm -hmm. She thought more of herself as a human. And many of these cats do think of themselves as humans. They mm -hmm. feel like that um, whatever you do, they should be doing too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can say that. Now that's typical of all cats, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, they train well. They, um, I've even got cats that I have sold that have potty trained them on toilets oh, and yeah. uh, many of them you can see uh, that they uh, love to take baths and play in the water, play with toys in the water. No, that's not typical for cats. <laughs> no, but I'm going to tell you what, Sphinx love to do that and, and normally when you take them as a kitten and put them in a little bit of tub of water, just, mm -hmm. just a little bit of water to get them used to the water and put little toys in there. They will hop in there when they're babies and get used to the water and that's where they uh, get to where they love to be in bathtubs. They'll mm -hmm. even, if when you're taking a bath, they'll even hop in the bathtub with you. <laughs> oh. Well, the next picture we have is one of Hot Eyes. What's uh, What's unusual about Hot Eyes? Hot Eyes, she is so gorgeous. She is the mother of the of Diamond here. Oh, okay. So Diamond um, is her offspring, and I fixed her. And uh oh, there no. we go. That, that's good. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> anyway. Well, she's decided to explore a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. She got tired of being on the table. She's been very good, you know, about yes. being on the table and very patient. And now she wants to explore a little bit. She's had enough TV exposure. Oh, today. I <laughs> think so. I think she has. But oh. Hot Eyes is, it, what I, the reason why I named her Hot Eyes is because she has got, she's got the most, uh, her eyes are very gold, mm. and they are so, um, they're just, I don't know, it, it, you, you just, when you can just spot her right on, uh -huh. and that's the reason why I named her Hot Eyes, because okay. her eyes are so sparkly, big, okay. and you don't want them round, you want them lemon-shaped. Mm. Okay. All right, and the last picture we have is of the Supreme Grand Champion. Tell us about, about him or her. Okay, him. Yeah. Uh, his name is Ortiz. Ortiz, and, okay. And, um, and I had him fixed and we decided to show him and, um, and he was shown by uh, no, Tamara Steele. She's up in Canada and she yeah. went and took him and showed him That's and okay. Supreme Grand Champion him and he was number one in his region here in the he States. To, so there, there is a competition for, uh, to show cats. Yes, uh, and you can even, they're not like dogs, you can show them whether they're spayed or neutered. 
They're okay. just in a different uh, classification. Uh -huh. They're in a premier class. Okay. And then you got your other class where the cats that aren't spaded, that are breeders, that are in a different class. Okay. So, oh, the, I, I've gotten a real education today, and I hope our viewers too, and I'm sure they have. I, I've, I guess I had heard of these cats, but didn't really know that much about them, and, uh, and certainly had never felt one up, per, up uh, close and personal, if you will. Well, <laughs> and to Diamond has just been a real wonderful yeah. little uh, uh, guest to have with us this afternoon. Um, we're unfortunately beginning to come to the end of the program. Teresa, what one point or points would you like our viewers to remember from our show today? Well, the thing that I would want them to remember is that these cats are very, very lovable and um, these cats are not like your average cat. In fact, I have many people that were dog people and said they wouldn't even like cats. And mm -hmm. they weren't cat people, but once they got a cat, one of these, they were, they were sold on it. They, uh, okay changed over to being cat people. Okay. Well, uh, uh, th this has just been a, a fascinating show and, and we thank you, Teresa, so much for coming and sharing with us today and sharing Diamond with us. And I'm hoping that our viewers will, uh, if you've thought about cats and remember that uh, uh, allergies to cats do not necessarily apply to these hairless cats. So it may be something for you to think about in the future. And in closing, I'm Greg Bauer. And I want you to remember what we say every time. Give your pet a little extra love today and every day. See you next time.